So, I did a live stream the other day, and someone said yet another person tried to take down my idea of anarcho-coalitionism, and they wanted a response. They said they couldn't find it, but that they would when they could. I didn't wait for that, though, as I had an itch to scratch about that. Another person tried, but this time they didn't even talk to me first. This time, they didn't tag me when it came out. But what was I thinking? Of course not. It's not a person. It's another cartoon character. That explains a lack of PR. Also, it might explain why he has such a hard time properly formatting his descriptions and titles. Hard to type properly through the jacket his hands are always stuffed in. Assuming he has hands, that is. Maybe he's just stumps down there? And like, who drew this Avi and thought it was a good idea? With friends like those, you don't need enemies. Uh, jokes aside, his vid is better than Hoplu's. In substance, at least, not in presentation. That said, still not great. My assessment could be summed up in my comments on the stream I did. Quote, oh, and to clarify, I found the vid on Ankle. Responses soon. Not surprised this gunslinger didn't reach out for comment, though. His video is better than Hoplu's, but that bar is low enough that it can still manage to be trash especially since he's seemingly only opposing it to push something which sounds nearly identical to anarcho-coalitionism. Like I said, responding soon. Gonna be good. So, without something or other, let's hit Gunslinger Zack and see if he's feeling lucky. A solution is anarcho-coalition. The intended goal of this is to create an alliance of anarchists in order to destroy the government and create panarchy. Pan-anarchy. I didn't come up with this. Where the different branches of anarchy are voluntarily chosen and we live peacefully. Of course, anarchists, like me, have had concerns for how this will really go. My first reason for suspicion is that the one thing that unifies anarchists, for a reason I'll go into later, is their hatred for ANCAPs and their hatred for Hoppian. So the first issue he brings up is that many anarchists hate ANCAPs and Hoppians. Well, Given the standard of versions with which you lot batter the others, that's understandable. I mean, you couldn't even address what you claimed were libertarian ethics without shitting on mutualists. Ancaps and Hoppians are often the philosophical equivalent of Caitlin Bennett, hurling one insult or another, and then smarmily mouthing, you know what, carry right, when people get peeved. Not a great way to make friends and influence people. Secondarily, ANCAPs and other right libertarians often don't even know the roots of libertarianism. They often think it started with someone like Ayn Rand or Murray Rothbard because they either don't know how to use Google or they didn't like what they found. That, of course, being that libertarianism as a political philosophy started as a socialist or communist ideal in France and was decidedly left-wing for the better part of a century. Then, when Americans started calling a philosophy libertarian, they did so without citing or being respectful of the original libertarians, essentially saying that it was the opposite of what a lot of them were. Also not a good way to ease into a sitch. It'd be like if I said I was Christian, and when you asked what church I went to, I said, Nah, man, not that kind of Christian. I just like Chris down at the corner store. We homies, yo. Actual Christians would likely take umbrage to this. So, you insult people and disrespect the nature of a thing they started, and you're surprised when they don't see eye to eye with you? The burden of proof is on you to prove your ideas are better for liberty, and after watching much of your channel to research for this video, I can confidently say you aren't very good at proving things at all or drawing, or writing. Reminds me of someone. Anyway, let's get back into it. It further worries me that I will be allying with people who advocate for the abolition of capitalism. Not that capitalism will fade it out by better opportunities. Abolition of it. He says he doesn't like the idea of abolishing capital. I'll put it this way. Your understanding is still in the concept art stage. Very rough and will hopefully change before the public sees more of it. Chief among your errors is a misunderstanding of the intent of abolish capital as a phrase. What it means in an anarchist context is not that some central authority will decide on the existence of capital. What it means is that ANCOMs will structure their society around a lack of capital. 
Now, this normally upsets ANCAPs, so let me translate it. They want to collectively own their own factories and the other means of production rather than delegating that to a boss, who they see as a central authority. So while ANCAPs could be over in ANCAPistan having a boss and worker relationship, ANCOMs see this as exploitative and would not do this under their communist societies. This might be a rub if we were seeking statist means to our ends, but part of the point of ANCOL is to only work with those who don't involve the state. No feds allowed. The point is to get to a point of statelessness in order to prove anarchy can work then split into our chosen living situations. So like, yeah, they can abolish capital by not having it in the first place, and you can have your capital. The interesting part will be seeing which siphons more people off to see how many communists defect so they can have capital, and how many capitalists decide to shrug and leave their bosses for a co-op. The point is, there will be fucking options. This insistence that it only be one way in the end isn't very voluntarist of you. They also advocate for the abolition of private property, harming a fascist, and then they claim that Hans Hermann Hoppe is one of them. Some even want to kill ANCAPs. Already this doesn't sound like a good deal, but I've just explained what I see when I check the internet for five seconds. He goes on to say they advocate for the abolition of private property and the harming of fascists, and that they claim Hoppe is one of them, and that they want to kill ANCAPs. Well, citation needed, buckaroo. For anti-collectivists, ANCAPs can often be among the quickest to collectivize and homogenize their opponents. It's truly hilarious that he thinks he can fight anti-individual mentalities by making claims about the beliefs of a whole collective with no citations and no facts. Hell, I'd venture that many comms don't even know who Triple H is, much less think he's a fascist. And the ones who do think he's a fascist, you didn't even address them or any of their points because you just wanted to throw out a hasty assertion and claim it supports your arguments. It doesn't. And for someone who claimed in another video that he knew how argumentation ethics work, you suck at arguing. Pro tip, it's not okay when you do it. Don't set a standard for yourself that you won't keep for others. If you don't want me to call you Liberty Hangout or claim you're basically Cantwell, don't homogenize your political opponents. You won't like how this goes for ANCAPs, and there are countless stereotypes I work tirelessly to crush on that front, as well as when any other anarcho gets pigeonholed. But if you want a duel... Don't any of you have that guts to fight for blood? I'm your huckleberry. That's just my game. Still, gotta love the last part. Takes the cake on the stereotype score. If you get to claim that all ANCOMs want to kill ANCAPs based on your decidedly narrow interaction with them, if at all, then I get to claim the inverse. That I've actually interacted with hundreds of self-proclaimed ANCAPs who regularly fetishize killing all leftists. One look at a helicopter or Hoppian snake meme page will tell you that. So let's be clear, you really don't want to go there, and are again being Caitlin Bennett about this. So let's continue. Another thing that seems to be is that there's only two plans for left anarchists to create an anarchist society. One is violent revolution where the workers rise up in the usual commie stuff. The plan that I support though is that of agorism or knowingly, mostly profitable, civil disobedience to end the state. This one I'm fine with and the surprise that commies would not only accept it but endorse and argue for it. Of course, this is a negative view not on a positive one. Most commies will go with the violent revolution plan that they plan to use to abolish capitalism and since that gorism includes trade, remember that too many commies think that there can't be ethical consumption under capitalism, they see agorism as an immoral plan. He goes on to say that the two plans for leftists are a violent revolution and the, the usual commie stuff or civil disobedience. Moving past his repeatedly hilarious attempts to claim individualist philosophies while being wholly averse to treating leftists as individuals, let's pick this apart. He not only homogenized all communists this time, but he homogenizes all leftists. This is absolutely hilarious because it proves his dishonesty succinctly by highlighting that he sees mutualists, ANCOMs, ANSOKs, market anarchs, and ANSINs as the same. He also says they all hate agorism. Well, again, citation the fuck needed. 
Many leftists I know appreciate agorism, and some of the best sources of info on agorism are left-wing. And many agorists I know identify as leftists. The whole point of agorism was to be an alternative to ANCAPs, not to be a shield for poorly drawn cartoon characters to hide behind in defense of ANCAPs. I guess I'll make a vid soon on this specifically because this is so common and laughable as to merit one, but to assert that the founder of the movement of the libertarian left, Samuel Edward Konkin III, was hated by leftists is absolutely naive to the point of absurdity. But then again, the rest of your video is just that, naive to the point of absurdity. But let's be clear, your assertion that only the left wants violence and that the left are all simply commies in the end is just hilarious. No further comment needed. And your implication that the right are the peaceful alternative, have you, uh, seen them? Because it sounds like you haven't, so like, open your eyes or something the common good, for the simple reason that they do not believe in and hate private property. ANCAPs cannot coexist with this or team up with, so ANCAPs cannot be a part of anarcho-coalitionism or be panarchists. All hope is not lost, though, since there are those on the left who describe themselves as Rothbardians, just like me. And in order to be a Rothbardian, you must believe in property rights. How do we separate these two very different people so that we can ally with the people who actually will be friends with us and not those who are enemies with us and will inevitably harm us? I will answer such a question with a question that will answer such concerns. Suppose that there was a capitalist town near a commune that was wealthier than the commune and they weren't giving the commune any money or business. Do the communists have a right, since they don't believe in private property, to steal said wealth from the capitalists? If you answered yes, then you have proven to me why panarchy wouldn't be feasible for the ANCAPs, and I now know not to associate with you. If you answered no, however, I would be glad that you did. You would hold that the capitalist right to their own property over the communist supposed right to their property. You, in short, believe in property rights. Therefore, you are a voluntarist. He goes on to compare an alliance of anarchs to right unity. This is dumb. Really dumb. For real. The reason and coal even works in theory, is that we have the same goal, to see an end to the state. Authoritarians and libertarians, however, are diametrically opposed, and sit at opposite ends of any meaningful spectrum. Hoppe's alliance with the alt-right is just the latest example of someone not understanding this. Previous examples include Rothbard's dumb alliance with the populist right, wherein he endorsed a bunch of conservative statism and co-signed the police state by suggesting they be unleashed to clear the streets of homeless, among other things. These alliances between libertarians and the state are always and forever retarded, and they prove the right can cuck too. A recent example of this is how my video on a fascist cop literally calling for the extermination of the left had rightists calling the cop a hero. These people are not our allies, period. So the idea that it's at all comparable to Ancol is asinine. People proposing Triple H's alliance and Rothbard's populism also miss the fundamental point of liberty, which is not to fight the left, but to strive against all authority. Which is why Zach's comparison of alliances between varying factions of anti-authoritarians to alliances between alleged anti-authoritarians and literal fascists proves he probably wears a helmet to sleep. Plus, he can't even pronounce Hoppe, and anyone who can't pronounce someone's name probably shouldn't talk about them until they learn how to. He then goes on to decry panarchy, Given that ANCOL is essentially just a militant organized form of panarchy, his distinction between the two is pretty laughable. But then he simply asserts that it's terrible and goes on to restate his flawed premise that all anarchists have a homogenous hatred for ANCAPs and one which is entirely unearned and unaddressable despite just having gone over an example of a very popular figure suggesting an alliance with fascists and despite just having attempted to defend this figure from accusations of fascism. Poorly, I might add. If you were truly interested in being less targeted, he might choose to distance himself from this group, or show that the group never included them to begin with. But instead, 
he stumbles through a video glossing over the subject entirely. Absolutely laughable stuff, and his insistence that abolition must be violent and statist is just the toppest of cack, after he said earlier in the vid that the left has peaceful means of revolution. Pick one, buddy. Either the left has potentially peaceful means of change, or they're all violent shitheads out to steal your toothbrush. You can't have both. But of course, that might mean actually looking into what they believe. And many ANCAPs are as averse to ANCOM literature as ANCOMs are to visiting the Mises Institute site. Cause everyone's in fucking grade school and y'all are afraid of cooties. Grow up and fully inform your thoughts before letting them out of your sound hole. And further, stop insisting that the left is the only group who wants violence, despite aligning with a group who calls themselves Hoppian, only to use memes related to Pinochet. You know, a fascist who violently purged opponents, and while you yourself later admit he was inconsistent in his alliance with fascists. Cunt. And since he then goes on to bring up a point I already addressed in my response to Hoplu, I'll just play that for you, cause it'd be stupid to spend my time on something I've already addressed like 20 times. This is why he should have reached out to me. This whole misunderstanding could have been avoided. When Hop Loser asked if it was okay for a communist to seize a neighboring city's resources, I summarily dismissed that. And when he claimed that Rothbardian voluntarism was the only way to respect property, I also shut that down. Here's that. So how does this pose a problem? To answer that question, imagine this situation of which I am about to describe to you. Once upon a time in the glorious panarchist's glorious utopia, an anarcho-communist tribe desires a shiny piece of property held by the neighboring anarcho-capitalist tribe. They really, really want it. And fortunately for the anarcho-communist tribe, they do not believe in the concept of private property. In fact, their whole philosophy is about the abolition of such. Do they, the anarcho-communist tribe, have the right to grab their guns and waltz into the uncapped tribe and seize the property for themselves? If your answer was yay, then you have properly proven to me why there is no means for panarchy to exist, as this violates the right of the anarcho-capitalist tribe to the self-determination of which would be granted to them by panarchy, as it could be violated by a neighbor with a different view of property and anarchy. This point of property is a straw man that many ANCAPs blithely take at face value. However, the reason ANCOMs joke about taking your toothbrush is precisely because they know it gets under the skin of whoever accepts this without any scrutiny. Anarchist communism is not opposed to personal property, but private. In anarchist communes, you're either entitled to whatever was agreed to upon entry and whatever you can make with your labor, or a cut of what the community produces, providing you work as a part of that production. Not all communists want to abolish property as a whole, and in fact, a small minority comprise those who do. Even smaller still is that percentage under ANCOM ideas who want that. They, instead, believe surplus labor or profit to be a source of exploitation. And when you conflate all types of property with one another, well, Alexander Berkman put it this way. Yet you are asked to believe that you, the workers, have the same interests as your exploiters and robbers. Can anyone but a downright fool be taken in by such a plain fraud? Read Berkman's What is Communist Anarchism? While you may shake your head a lot in disagreement, what you can't do is find advocacy of statism, quite the opposite. Adherents to ANCOM ideas often echo Berkman, claiming provisional governments are not improvements on capitalism, but a downhill drive. More examples of this mindset exist, but I want this vid to be under 20 minutes, or it'll take all day to upload with fucking Usenet. But your privatization propaganda has my inner Berkman coming up anyway, as many believe little could be done to mitigate monopolist disputes if certain things weren't considered non-private. And Rothbard cut to the rightest state before he died anyway. See my piece on his, quote, unleash the cops comment, and how his politics at the time of issuing that comment were surrounded by a phalanx of impatience-driven right-wing populism. His view may have at one point been anarchist adjacent, but his is a cautionary tale of what happens when you hate the left more than you hate the state. Still, I can't help but notice that again, you conflate all communism with Marxism and refuse to acknowledge the distinction ANCOMs make between private and personal property. This is a fatal error in successful counter-argument, and you realize that if you actually studied ANCOM ideology. You've made it clear you haven't. In order to run a successful coalition, it takes people who've looked into the various schools of anarchy enough to know what they advocate, and not strawman like this. It's not lost on me how someone who hasn't looked into the various schools of anarchy would think Ancol is impossible. If the breadth of your philosophy is internet memes and you try for the big boy conversations, you're going to have a bad time. At 4 minutes 8 seconds in, you ask a question easily answerable by the Ancom position. Do they have the right to seize the property produced by a neighboring tribe? No. They are not the worker who produced that, nor are they the community they might think it belongs to. Your example is a burger, for fuck's sake, and that would never be something an Ancom would consider seizing anyway. It, obviously, being the food a worker produced and needs to live. 
What a bougie thing it would be to steal it from his mouth. Might as well wear a top hat and call yourself Rockefeller. Now let me ask, Hoplu. Did anyone answer yes? Didn't think so. But even if someone had, a bad actor doesn't invalidate a whole system you clawed. If that's the case, all systems are impossible as is demonstrated by some of the shitheads I've dealt with in your camp. Like Sprin, who by this point has already read himself into a coma over me quoting Huey Newton earlier in this vid and proceeding to give Ancoms a fair shake. You know, like he did when I quoted the guy before. Because Sprin is a great example of your brain on internet, like when he supported a video of a guy apparently being attacked by a royal guard because he was taunting him. Or when he asserted, with no evidence, proper case, spelling, or punctuation, that forced capitalism is a contradiction in terms. Or when he said, all forms of communism must be beaten back. A tweet you liked, without knowing about or acknowledging all forms of communism, to ensure a state does not form. But beating back communism is not an insurance that a state won't form. It's not even insurance that the state you hate won't form. People will wonder why you're beating people instead of just letting their ideas fail, if you're so convinced they will. So, what's Zach's final saunter out of the saloon? And I might mean that literally, since the amount of slurring Zach did in this video is almost tantamount to a drunkard, and because his ideas clearly aren't founded upon sober reflection. But how does he finish this? By endorsing anarcho-coalitionism. The Anti-Aggression Alliance is an alliance I created, a voluntarist who wish to end aggression, the initiation of violence onto somebody, or of their belongings. Unlike anarcho-coalitionism, we have rules on who is or isn't allowed in. You must be a voluntarist in order to get in. With that out of the way, anarchists can start planning on actually dealing with the state, and not just going around being violent degenerates. Yeah, he just didn't fucking understand it. And he not only didn't understand it, but he likely misunderstood because his only real exposure to it was Hop Loser's video. Like... Hop Blue is the second person he followed on Twitter, and the twelfth person he was followed by, so they're clearly informed of each other's works. And since Zach's vid was almost a copy of Hop Blue's, with few exceptions, he could have watched my response to Hop Blue's video. But almost nine months after I put it out, he still managed to put out this absolute dumpster fire. Probably because he watched Hop Loser's vid and thought, hey, I could do that too! I wonder if it's a rite of passage now for the poorly drawn cartoon and cap crowd to hit my idea. Whatever if it is, free views, but let me be specific. Someone who wants to initiate violence or theft upon someone is no anarchist. They're just a temporarily embarrassed ruler. This is the essence of ANCOL, an alliance between those authentically interested in ending the state, not a way for usurpers to strike after being snakes in the grass. It's isolated action, whereby temporary coalitions are built, used, and then broken if needed, to achieve specific anti-state goals. But you can't be anti-state and philosophically endorsed organized aggression. Most ANCOMs know this. Most left libs know this. So let's not fucking mince words here. Zach was too dumb to research, too lazy to ask questions, and too incoherent to properly address my ideas. And as a result, he came full circle jerk to actually endorse them while being completely oblivious that he did so. He lost. And if you stand in the way of liberty, as most if not all Ancol opponents do, you'll lose too. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some cold of mine. By the way, maybe y'all should stop shitting on furries and commission some decent art for once.